Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. I'd like to welcome you to this webinar. My name is Brian Orr, and I'll be your organizer for the session. And with me today is Brad Burki. App Plumber is not only about empowering you with information, but also about convenience. Log into the PRB's audited system through App Plumber and purchase or log a COC. Follow an audit process. Log and monitor your CPD. Check your PIRB invoices. Update your PIRB profile details. Even do your renewals. All in the palm of your hand. App Plumber. Everywhere you go, there we are. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. That's it from my side, and I'd like to hand over to our presenter now. Uh, good morning, everyone. Can everyone see my screen? Is that good, Byron? Yep, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay, uh, good morning again, um, everyone. This morning, we are going to be talking about securities for performance. Okay. Um, and let's just start by understanding what is a security. So, for those um, attendees that work um, as subcontractors to main contractors, or perhaps even in your domestic environment, you will have a client that wants to hold um, some money back as retention. Um, so basically, it is a financial instrument, okay, which we will cover just now, or cash that provides the other party with a form of protection if the party providing the security defaults in the execution of his obligations. Okay, so it's like a bit of a guarantee that um, if you don't um, execute your obligations entirely or to the required quality or on time or properly in any uh, man manner, then um, your client has a little bit of something that they can rely on um, either to engage others or, or to do it themselves or to force you to do it in order to release um, that security. Okay. Um, what um, there are two main types um, of security, and that is cash retention and construction guarantees. Okay. So, what most contractors and subcontractors don't realize is that the default security for performance is a guarantee, all right, and not retention. So uh, if you're working on a, on a JVCC or a master builder's contract, then you will see, it doesn't matter which version you're on, there are provisions for you to provide a security. And if you read those documents um, carefully, you will note that, first of all, the security is your option. Okay, so they, you shouldn't be dictated to as to whether um, what type of security you're going to provide. But the document actually says that the default um, security is a guarantee. And as a matter of fact, if you don't provide a guarantee, the document documents actually say that they can cancel your contract and not even get moving. Now, in reality, that doesn't um, happen. And in my experience, um, your client or contractor will always option, opt for the cash retention option. Um, just remember that cash retention is not actually to assist the contractor's cash flow, which it, uh, which it often does, okay? Which is why it's a popular form of security. And of course, it's not that easy to get a guarantee. So in most instances, um, regardless of what it says in the document, um, cash is the is the normal form of guarantee, okay, um, of of security at least. Now, in the in the JVCC and the MBSA, and I refer to those documents because they certainly are the most popular um, documents in, in 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 operation in this country. There are two types of guarantee. There's a variable reducing guarantee and a fixed guarantee combined with cash retention. How does cash retention work? Uh, sorry, I was just going to get ahead of myself there. 
So most, um, most people think that um, it works by 10% of each payment being withheld, okay, of all of your progress payments. So in other words, every time you issue, let's say you're on a project for six months, you've got six interim payments. Every time you issue a payment, the contractor or client will deduct 10% as security. Now, that is the common practice, okay? But just be warned that that is actually not how it, it works in the document. So the document says that your client or contractor can actually withhold all payments from you until they have 10% of your contract sum um, on hand, okay? And then they can, uh, and then only they start paying you. Now, the reason they do that is because if you had to give someone a guarantee, they would immediately be in the position where they had that full security against you. So let's say you, you provided a 10% guarantee. The minute you issue it, your client already has all that security on you. Okay. Fortunately, in reality, contractors know that they can't, um, they can't devastate your cash flow like that. Okay. So they, so they generally withhold 10% of each payment. That 10% um, gets reduced to 2.5% on practical completion. And that, um, that brings about another um, quandary for many subcontractors because you may be working on a job and you may finish your work long before practical completion of the whole job is achieved, okay? And if we take an extreme example, let's say you're a piling contractor, you execute the piling on a job, they withhold 10% maximum retention from you, and the job only finishes a year later. <clears throat> so in strict reading of the document, you will only get your retention release, okay, at that time. So just bear that in mind when you're entering into a contract where there's a lot of activity after your scope, it is something you may want to negotiate with your, um, with your client because it's quite unfair, in my opinion, to be put into that position, okay? And then your final retention is only released on final payment certificate, which is at least three months after practical completion. And often the achievement of the final milestone of completion is delayed way longer than 90 days. Okay, so letting someone hold cash does, does um, <clears throat> lead to problems. Okay, so what is actually the maximum amount of retention <clears throat> that can be held against a contractor or subcontractor? Okay, so in, in the, the documents that I refer to, there's a, there are two definitions. The first one I want to bring to your attention is the contract sum, all right? And that is basically your accepted quote. So let's say you enter into a contract and your contract sum is 100,000. If you have chosen cash as a security, your client or contractor can only take a maximum of 10% of that 100,000 which is 10,000, okay? If your scope increases from 100,000 to 200,000, they're not allowed to take retention on the extra 100,000. And they always and often do. So that's just another tip for you to look out for. Don't let them pay more security than they're allowed to take. Okay, so basically, when a contractor engages you as a subcontractor, they need to make sure that they get your scope right, okay? And if, if they get it wrong, then unfortunately, they're not going to have the additional security, okay? Now, it works the other way around as well, but given that you get retention taken off every payment, the risk is much, much lower, okay? So you're not going to get to the amount you thought you would. I hope that makes sense. <clears throat> we can come back to it in our next session if anyone's got more queries um, on that. Okay, um, just also remember that retention does not attract interest, okay? So 
not only does it take money out of your cash flow, it also doesn't attract interest. Okay, so the builder or your client has the full use of your money, and when you when it finally gets paid back to you, you're going to get it with um, with no no interest. And of course, a further point to consider is that in the volatile industry we find ourselves in, if your client goes into business rescue or liquidation, you can basically kiss your retention goodbye. Okay. So, so those are the risks that come with allowing someone else to sit with your cash. So I certainly recommend um, procuring a guarantee if you can. And I realize that's not so easy for the smaller um, people out there, but there are um, institutions who do provide smaller guarantees and it's not that hard to get a facility. And if anyone wants to explore that, I do work with some people who provide those guarantees and um, I can always put you in touch um, with them if you make contact with me. Okay, so who actually provides um, construction guarantees? A lot of people um, think that it's it's only banks, okay? But it actually isn't. Um, banks certainly provide construction guarantees, but there are also specialist insurance companies that, that provide guarantees, okay? Like the, um, the institution I've just mentioned that I, I, I work with. Um, okay, so... I'm going to quickly cover the difference because it's very important, I think, especially if you are considering whether to move from a retention situation. You know, perhaps you've been hurt with retention, especially on the bigger jobs, you know. That retention can be a considerable amount of money. And the next minute, your contractor goes out of business and he's sitting with a few hundred thousand rand of your retention. I can assure you, in my experience over the last four years, nobody has got retention out of a contractor that's gone into business rescue. All right. So, um, hence, I advocate trying to get a guarantee if you can. If you approach your bank okay, for a bank guarantee, um, your bank, remember, banks do not take risk. Okay. They, um, they're a financial institution. If you go to your bank and you tell them, I'll, I've got a, a, a 1 million rand contract and I need to raise a 100,000 rand guarantee, the bank is going to tell you, please deposit 100,000 rand with us plus the cost of the guarantee and then we'll issue you the paper. In other words, they take no risk whatsoever. If someone cashes the guarantee, if something goes wrong, they've already got your hundred thousand rand as security. So it's not a great, um, it's not a great place to go when you're looking for a security. A much better place to go is to your insurance company. Okay, um, insurance companies also require collateral, but in my experience, that number is somewhere between twenty and. 30, maybe 35%, okay? So you're not giving up anywhere near as much um, of your working capital to raise the guarantee. And of course, that money is safe, okay? So um, when, you, when you return the guarantee to the guarantor, you get your collateral back. Same with the bank, okay? But it's, it's, it's not at risk like it would be if you were on cash retention. There are also fees. They're probably about the same, probably about 3%. Of the value of the guarantee to raise it <clears throat> and you as a company have to give your insurance company some form of security and that could be a pledge of debts a personal surety um, or something they're going to want something from you to protect them in the in the event of a call on your guarantee okay um which is why i want to quickly talk about the fact that notwithstanding an insurance company has issued the guarantee, it's actually not an insurance product in the strict sense of the term. Okay, So if we take a traditional insurance product, like your car insurance, 
if you have an accident, your, your um, insurance company pays out and you pay a first excess. Okay. On this, in this scenario, if your insurance company pays out a construction guarantee, they will come after you for the full 100% of that value. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Of course, you must never let yourself get into a position where someone can call a guarantee. And to do that, you have to manage your contract and you have to perform properly. And if you do those two things, you should never find yourself in a position where someone calls your guarantee. Okay, so I hope you found that of interest and um, perhaps something you want to explore um, going forward. Okay. Um, something else of importance I want to bring to your attention is who are the contracting parties to a guarantee? Okay. So <clears throat> when a <clears throat> Excuse me. When an insurance company or a bank they issue a guarantee to your client, okay, those are the relationships on the screen that uh, the contractual relationships that start, okay. So if you are working as a main contractor and you give your employer a guarantee, <clears throat> a contract is formed between the employer and the guarantee company. Notwithstanding that you have security in the background, okay, you are not a party to the guarantee. And that's very important to understand because if the employer makes a call on your guarantee, there's nothing you can do about it, okay, because you're not a party to that contract. And the employer has to pay, and the guarantor has to pay. Of course, it needs to be a valid, lawful, <clears throat> and proper call. So they have to go through procedures and processes to get to the stage where they're able to call your guarantee. Okay, and the same goes for all the other type of guarantees. So if you're a subcontractor and you pro provide your, your contractor with a guarantee, the same thing exists. Okay, so just bear that in mind. Um, who, uh, okay, so <clears throat> what is the intention of, of a guarantee. So in the common law, okay, if you breach your contract and the other client sues you for damages, the common law in this country and most countries in the world um, have a prescript that says that you must try and place the innocent party back into the position they would have been in had the default not occurred. I think that's very easy to understand. But just remember that if you are exposed to your client for more than the value of your guarantee, okay, they can still come after you for the balance. So let's say on our, on our contract example, we used, we enter into a contract for a million rand, we've issued a hundred thousand rand guarantee. Something goes catastrophically wrong, okay? And you find yourself in a position where you, you've got 200, a 200,000 rand um, problem. <clears throat> they cash your guarantee for 100, and then they will come after you or your company for the next 100, okay? So I can't reiterate more, that you must never let yourself get into a position where, where that event arises. How do guarantees expire? <clears throat> now, this is another reason why um, I promote the use of guarantees, because I was personally involved on a project that never got to final completion after 10 years. Okay, So the client was sitting with the contractor's retention, the balance of his retention, for 10 years. And as a matter of fact, um, it never got resolved. Again, that contractor actually ended up going out of business. And of course, the client never had to, had to give the money back or, the, or never had to release the retention. So as it stands, <clears throat> your guarantee, if you've issued a variable guarantee, which is the most common type, 
that guarantee will reduce in value as the works progress, but it will only get to 0% um, right at the end of the job um, after final completion when the final payment certificate is issued. In other words, the final account's been agreed. You've achieved final completion as a contractor. There's no more snags to do. Everyone's happy. And the final payment certificate issued is issued which basically releases you from all your obligations. Everything's done. And you get your, the last bit of your retention back. Now, we don't want a situation where, if you use the example I used, um, and, and the contractor can't get to final completion for year after year, you don't want your guarantee to be on the line for that long, isn't it? So what guarantee companies do is they always put an expiry date onto a guarantee. And the whole industry, maybe they colluded, I'm not sure, but in my experience, you won't find a guarantor that will issue you a guarantee without an expiry date, which is a very good thing. Okay? So I suppose in their, from their perspective, that um, potential liability, it's called the contingent liability, sits on their balance sheet as well. So they can't have it never ending. They've got to have um, an end date. Now, you are required to keep your guarantee in place as long as the works progress. Um, but you can extend it in short periods. Okay? So if the project is delayed by three months, you can extend your guarantee by three months. All right? It will attract more premium. But when you find yourself in a situation where there's a dispute or whatever, you can normally get out of that guarantee. But your, your, guarantor, your guarantor might come to a point where they say, we are just not prepared to extend this thing anymore. You are not the cause of the problems on site, whatever dispute there is, and therefore we are not ex re, um, extending it. Um, it's, it's tricky and it requires um, proper um, thought if your contractor does insist on having it live but it is a much better situation to be in okay, than to have someone holding all your cash retention for years. Uh, Brad, you're still there. We seem to have lost you. Yeah, I think he, his internet maybe gave off there. Yeah, I think we've got load shedding coming through. I don't know if that kicked in there, Byron. Uh, let's just give it a minute. Apologies, ladies and gents uh, in attendance. Let's just see if we can get uh, Brad back. Uh, but if not, Brad is doing another session. We'll catch up on this one. So let's just give him another minute or so to see if he can reconnect. And uh, we'll take it from there. Apologies. I think, Byron, if there's any questions from those in attendance, if they want to maybe just put it into the chat and, uh, you know, we can uh, forward them through to uh, to Brad uh, in the event that we don't get him back. But so if there's any questions or anything that uh, anybody has with regards to this morning's session, uh, just possibly put them in the chat and then we'll be able to uh, pose them through to Brad and pick them up on the next session. So... <clears throat> Start typing away, ladies and gents. Uh, apologies, ladies and gentlemen. Um, I just got a call now from Brad saying that the whole area went down. It's not load shedding, so it's a bit out of his control. Um, so if you do have any questions, please just post it quickly. We'll take them down for, for next week then. Um, but we're going to end off the, the session in a minute or two now. Yeah, I think uh, Aaron, it's a it's a really good uh, you know Brad has been in this game for for a long long time and I've had many discussions with him and uh, the amount of knowledge that he has in terms of uh, the construction industry is phenomenal and there's not too many things that he hasn't uh, seen in terms of late payments or, or these type of things. So I think it's critical for those that are in this industry in terms of the construction sector or anything else that we're doing. But also to, uh, you know, Brad will be doing a couple more sessions and we're working on some things with him. Uh, and it is a, a part of industry that does 
require attention uh, because again, as we see from IOPS or PIOB or even you know as Brad sees it, is the the minefield of the construction sector and making sure that uh, all our ducks in a row in terms of contracts and what your um, your rights are. So it really is important. I see we've got one question that's come up there, Byron. Uh, it's not really right. question, it's just, a comment. Yeah, just interesting topic. Thanks, Johan. Um, yeah, I think it's something that's been very lacking uh, in terms of the construction sector. Uh, I think, uh, as I experienced, and many of you have done that, it, it goes back to the school of hard knocks. And we learn, you know, by our mistakes and, you know, once bitten, twice shy. And, um, yeah, it's an interesting topic that at least we've got somewhere to go and ask advice and be educated in terms of what our rights are. So um, I do apologize for uh, our dropping uh, Brad's signal, unfortunately, out of our hands. But um, Byron, thank you very much. Uh, Johan, thank you for the, uh, the, the, the positive note in terms of that. But uh, we'll get Brad back. So just have a, a watch out for Brad and we'll pick up the session possibly next week, Thursday. Uh, just to confirm, we'll just maybe move things over. But I thank you very much for your attendance and uh, have a wonderful day. Byron, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Uh, and thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us this morning. Thank you and have a blessed week.